What's up my fellow historians, my name is Kyle Reynolds. You may have noticed that I'm not at our usual 300 seconds of science set. Nice catch. I am very excited to announce that this is the first episode of 5 Minute Flashback, our official history spin-off. Today, I'm going to tell you about the Reign of Terror, a period of the French Revolution that's about as much fun as its name would suggest. The Reign of Terror, also simply known as the Terror, did not last very long, from about 1793 to 1794, but was one of the most eventful and pivotal parts of the revolution. It was the bloodiest point of the revolution, resulting in thousands of public executions. Less than four years after the storming of the Bastille in July of 1789, the monarchy had no authority over the furious peasants and were being hunted for trial, imprisonment, and execution. In January of 1793, King Louis XVI had been publicly beheaded, and the monarchy of France was no more. Soon after, the Committee of Public Safety was created as a placeholder government in an attempt to bring order to the chaos. The committee would go on to be the leading governmental power during the entirety of the terror. Before the formation of the committee, a group of radicals known as the Jacobins sought to take control over the country. One of these radicals, Jean-Paul Marat, was a prominent journalist and wrote many biased papers and articles attacking those he considered enemies to the revolution. Marat's journalism was incredibly harsh, calling for the death of many individuals. As such, Marat became a target for many of his adversaries and was later murdered in his bathtub in July of 1793. The death of Marat sparked even more political discourse. Previous members of the committee, such as Georges Danton, were removed and replaced with Jacobin members like Maximilien de Robespierre. Robespierre resided as the president of the Committee of Public Safety for the duration of the terror and was the leading force in inciting it. On September 5, 1793, Bertrand Barrere, a fellow committee member, ended a speech with, let's make terror the order of the day. Figures like Barrere and Robespierre saw terror as a key component of a revolutionary government. In a 1794 speech, Robespierre said, terror is nothing more than speedy, severe, and inflexible justice. What does all this mean exactly? What is Robespierre really talking about? Well, before the committee's rise to power, there was violence all over. Several massacres took place in the years leading up to the terror, and most were brutal and disorganized. Robespierre saw his and Barrere's idea of terror to make violence a government force, therefore making it more civilized. Sounds great, but the only problem was that there really wasn't a way to police this, as the committee made and enforced the rules themselves. Without a system of checks and balances, Robespierre was pretty much free to use the committee to execute whoever or whatever he saw as a political threat. He became a sort of dictator over the French government. A group called the Girondins were initially part of the Jacobins, but later opposed the direction of terror that the revolution was heading in. Robespierre saw the Girondins as a large threat to his leadership. In October of 1793, many of the members were put on trial and executed by guillotine shortly after. As Robespierre and his committee had continued to round up as many offenders as they could find, the terror turned into a political witch hunt. Tensions grew so high that even members within the committee became wary and accusatory of each other. Factions divided even further, spawning two more parties, the Hébertists and the Dantonists. As the name suggests, the Dantonists were led by Georges Danton, the previous president of the committee. The Hébertists claimed that more terror was needed and the current administration was not doing enough. The Dantonists wanted reform and moderation to the mass executions and bloodshed. Can you guess which of these parties the committee put on trial for execution? That's right, both. In this time of mass distrust, Robespierre was also being attacked from all sides. In most of June and July of 1794, he was absent from the committee. He returned in late July with a speech that attempted to defend himself from said attacks. In this speech, he also accused committee members of an anti-revolution conspiracy. The next day, Robespierre was being accused of creating the conspiracy he spoke about and attempting to blame it on loyal committee members. His further attempts at defending himself were lost in a sea of angry party members and he was subsequently arrested. Robespierre and several of his cronies were then condemned to death by the committee that he created. Robespierre's death on July 28, 1794 signaled the end of the Reign of Terror. The revolution would continue for a few more years after, but it was nowhere near as chaotic and bloody as it had been under Robespierre. Overall, an estimated 40,000 people were killed during the terror, either due to execution or imprisonment, most often without any trial. Was the Reign of Terror necessary in paving the way for a new France? Or could the intense bloodshed have been avoided? Let us know by leaving us a comment or sending us a tweet. Remember to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave us a cute little heart on Instagram. Until next time, this is Kyle Reynolds reminding you to go out, enjoy life, and stay curious. Yeah.